Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Grace, mercy, and peace be to each and every one of you. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some of you may know me. Some of you may have seen me in this church before. I was a longtime member of St. Paul's, and John, my cousin, and our choir would come down here and sing quite often. And uh, I knew Pastor Sleep very well. Learn what it was about the Reformation right here at this altar from a puppet show many, many moons ago. <laughs> God has a hand on your life. And how well I know that and how I got to this point. Anthony was correct in what he said about our classes together. Reggie was in those classes as well. And we had Gail and a number of other people that have gone on to be pastors at other churches. The SP progress process was something that taught me a lot, not only about the Lutheran church, but about myself. Pastor Schlieff, Pastor Setgas, Pastor Perling, all these pastors have led me and guided me to be in this place today. I sang here, I laughed here, I cried here. One of my very good friend's funeral was there, Thomasita Spann, and I cried my eyes out because Thomasita and I sang in the choir together at St. Paul. This church is like my second home. And like I said, Anthony and Reggie and I, we shared some laughter. We shared some tears. We got a little upset every now and then because we really didn't know what we were getting ourselves into as licensed deacons. <laughs> Somebody just said, go take the classes, and we did. Right, Reg? Yeah. That's pretty much the way it is. So this journey has brought me back to faith. Back to faith Lutheran. And in coming back, I realized that this journey has not been an easy one. I've talked with a number of pastors on how their journey was, and to a fault, almost everyone that I talked to found out that there was somebody or something that was preventing them or working to prevent them from filling up that pulpit. Some hiccups along the way, some misdirection, somebody throwing something in my way to make me go the wrong way or to make me say or do the wrong thing. But this church, this congregation has something going for it that not many other churches have. Your name, Faith. Faith Lutheran Church. Faith to some people is just something fleeting in the moment that you may believe when times are good or you may have that faith when, when all the things are lined up like they're supposed to be, like ducks in a row. But faith is an ongoing and continual thing and it's a growing process. It's something that each and every day we learn more about our faith from the day before and the day before that and the day before that. You know, I believe in the uh, Italian racing driver theory or philosophy. Does anybody know what that is? What's behind me doesn't matter. <laughs> All I'm cared about is going forward. Amen. And so with my faith, I learn and lean on what I've learned in the past, but I move forward in that faith and in that love. <laughs> faith Lutheran Church. What a way to build on the future, because I know the struggles that you've had. I know of all, I knew of Pastor Sleep. I knew, I knew all the things, and, and, and it's not anything that's only here for Faith Lutheran. The struggle with parishioners, the struggle with sharing the Word of God with one another and coming to church on Sunday. You see, because I firmly believe that, yeah, we're doing a lot of things online, they're all well and good, but the fellowship that we have while we're here. I see you. I see all your faces, all your eyes. I, I see your smiles. I see your grimaces. I said, where's it going with this? I see all of that. <laughs> but you see, it's fellowship. It's fellowship because in teaching we learn and in learning we teach. And so I understand all of that. Because when I was first asked to teach a Bible study class, I was about the last person in this class that should have been teaching the class because I knew the least. 
My cousin John, who sat at that piano right there where that gentleman sits, and can play magnificent stuff. One day, while our family had a gathering, and John loved to play chess. I don't know if anybody else in here loves to play chess. I don't. <laughs> okay? I'm straightforward with you on that one. But John loved to play chess, and so John was looking for somebody to play. And everybody knew my competitive spirit, so they said, Frank, you go ahead and play him. Well, 10 moves later, John had beaten me. <laughs> and so when we got up from the chessboard, everybody said, so who won? And before I could answer, John said, Frank did, because he learned more than I did. You see, in our failures, we have to learn. We have trials, we have troubles, we have tribulations that happen in our lives. And how we handle those is what God wants to see in each and every one of us. You see, I call those tests in our lives, and we have little tests that come about. It may just be that guy that cut you off while you're driving down the freeway, or it may be the person that jumped in front of you when you were getting ready to get your groceries checked out, and how you handle those tests. We may not think of it like that, but I, that's the way I look at it. But God does not need to know. God already knows what you will do. He already knows how you will handle those, those tests and those situations. What he wants to, you to do is find out for yourself. You see, in, in our Old Testament reading this morning, Daniel talks about his fear but not losing faith. And when the archangel appears, he recognizes that he was there to help him. Psalm 91 tells us where to put our faith and what will happen when we do. And keeping the faith is a challenge, and it's a work in progress. As we move forward in our days, each and every day, we build on what we did the day before. Our lives will have more and more challenges. And I'll ask you this very simple question. Who is Satan going to go after? The one who is shouting and praising his glory and, and beating their chest and saying, Jesus is king, or the one who's sitting on the fence, or the one who's really not saying anything at all. You see, because when we stand up and call ourselves Christians, and when we demonstrate our faith, we put a target on us. There's a target right there in the middle of your chest, right where your heart is, and that's where Satan goes at. So don't be confused with the difference between temptations and tests. You see, tests are what God wants you to see in yourself. Temptations is Satan trying to pull you away from what God is trying to do in your life. Our gospel lesson tells us of the power that we possess in the name of Jesus, but we're also told not to rejoice in it, but to rejoice that our names are written in heaven. You see, one of the things about faith that I have learned through my wife. You know, every pastor is going to tell you this, that their wives are very strong instruments in their lives. And I know Anthony will tell you that about Sabrina. I know Pastor Lucas will tell you that about Donna. I know every pastor that's out there that has a wife in their lives that hasn't gone home to be with, with, with God our Father will tell you that they are the ones that keep them rooted. I once asked Pastor Lucas, what does Abba Father mean? What does Abba Father mean? And the one who answered the question was his wife, Donna. Donna said that means daddy. That's the familiar term that we have for our Father in heaven. That we can call out Abba Father and that means daddy, daddy, help me. Just like that little child right there will one day when start talking, mommy, mommy, daddy, daddy as we have children that are in our lives have cried out to us in times of danger and in times of trouble, in times of pain, in times when we're lost, we cry out, Abba, Father. And every time we cry out to Abba, Father, our faith gets strengthened. But he says, do not rejoice in the power that you have, but to remain humble. You see, the one that beats on his chest and says, look at me, look at me, is not recognizing that the power comes from somebody else. Faith Lutheran, live your name because the power that's in you comes from our Lord and Savior. Ezekiel 36, 26 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. 
I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Can't even read my own writing sometimes. In Joshua 1.9, I will leave you with. Have I not commanded you? Be strong. Be courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The struggles are there. But Psalm 23 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. It doesn't say, Yea, though I will sit in the valley of the shadow. Yea, though I will rest in the valley of the shadow of death. Yea, though I will stop here for a while and pick out the scenery and everything. I'm going through that valley. Amen. I'm going to go through it. And no matter what struggle you have right now, no matter what trials you're going through, you will get through them no matter how dark the day seems. Amen. That's a promise, not for me, but for my God in, in heaven. So Joshua 1.9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go.